Pablo Torre is one of these guys who is vying for the top three nomination of telling it like it is around here. But Stu Gatz believes he deserves to be an ESPN's medal stand of telling it like it is. And an emailer has helped his cause by sending us something from Stu Gatz January of 2017 that we can repurpose Today, you've got Jimmy Butler news. Stugatz, the visionary, was out in front of ripping Jimmy Butler and Dwayne Wade before anyone else. This is this is part of eight uninterrupted minutes that Stugatz did where never a word was heard from me. I'm stunned by that. You're stunned by Dwayne Wade and Jimmy Butler being a couple of crybabies? Because no one is stunned about that. Dwayne Wade's been a crybaby his entire career. And who is Jimmy Butler? Hey, go ahead. Jimmy Butler, what has he done? Oh, he's starting the Eastern Conference All-Star game. Big deal. A bunch of players made a mockery of the voting this year. And quite frankly, Jimmy Butler doesn't deserve to be a start on the All-Star game. And who is he to tell guys to play harder? You're the superstar. You play harder. And Wade complaining. That is the least stunning thing I've heard today. What did Dwayne think this was going to be? Honestly, what did he think this was going to be? You put together a team with Rajon Rondo and Robin Lopez, and you thought you were going to be good? Get out of here. Get out of here. You should be ashamed of yourself. I mean, you left Miami. That was your first mistake. And I am telling you right now, I'm telling you right now, and I'm telling the Heat organization, and I'm telling Dwayne Wade, okay? If he goes to Cleveland for one second, and he plays one second of one game in a Cavs uniform, I will make sure that he never gets a statue and that jersey (laughs) is never retired in the arena. I'll make sure of it. I will. I'll move mountains if I have to. <laughs> it's absurd, Dwayne Wade. And, and at least Dwayne Wade, in his defense, has some accomplishments. Won a couple of championships, three finals MVP. And Jimmy Butler hasn't done a single thing. Not a single thing. Nothing. <laughs> Way better watch out, man. Because I will leave no stone unturned. <laughs> In my crusade to tear down his statue and tear his jersey down from the rafters of the American Airlines Arena. Dan, I'm not looking at you right now, but I do get a vibe and a sense that you are agreeing with everything I'm saying. It'd be pretty hard not to. You're moving mountains and yeah. turning stones. <laughs> I needed that reminder. I got to get to work on that. Uh, Pablo, uh, the bronze medalist, in, in, not in the history of ESPN, but right now, you got to pick three and only three. The bronze medalist of telling it like it is at ESPN is? Well, I want to vie for this, Dan, because when was the last time I saw you? Can you tell the people that story? Uh, the last time I saw you was uh, we had we had dinner in New York, right? Uh, like before I went to Africa? We went to dinner with David Sampson, David Sampson's lady friend, my wife, your now fiance we went after dinner that i arranged and paid for by the way i took you to dale Talladay's restaurant rice and gold your chinatown great dinner full service you can't eat garlic right i had the kitchen not cook anything with garlic and not just not cook anything with garlic not touch any of the ingredients with garlic right massive inconvenience what happens next we go to see Wicked. We all saw Wicked together. You know, the Broadway play, the musical about the Wicked Witch of the West, except it's kind of like her origin story, heartwarming. We all enjoyed it. We went and had a whole evening. You went to Africa. And the next time I hear from you is now. Now, you tell me what happened in between Wicked and now that I might have wanted to hear about from you if we're going to tell it like it is. Did you come close to answering my question, or are you just airing personal grievances because I didn't tell you I was getting engaged? Ryan Fitzpatrick's resurgence? I am am not even done airing personal grievances, Dan. You went on the radio before my wedding and complained about black tie dress code. You complained about it for weeks. I had to answer to my wife, who had no idea what was going on, but people in her office who listened to your show were talking to her about it. Her mom got involved. I had to answer for all of this. And now you have a little taste, or you had a little taste, of what it's like to have your wedding litigated on air. I just appreciate the courtesy 
of the guy I see musical theater with before his trip to get engaged. I just appreciate when he brings me into the fold because I thought we were closer than that. But I guess we weren't. I guess we were not. You wanted me to tell you in front of her? I wanted you to tell me. Like, call you, take, go, your bathroom break? You and me just run off to the bathroom? Well, stroll. Absolutely. A a nice stroll, perhaps. Or even even a little winking text message. (laughs) Just so I didn't have to hear it from the co-host of the television show that I do every day at 4 p.m. Eastern ESPN. Uh, Bomani Jones, who apparently you had told without him even wondering or honestly truly even caring about it. <laughs> That's true. Bomani tells it like it is. So he's second. Bomani's second. What is the list yes. of bronze, so I, silver, I that, and gold medalist of telling it like it is at ESPN? I mean, the gold medalist is obviously Stephen A. It's Stephen A. There's no question. I work with him every day in the office. And I can say with utter confidence and also terror, in case I didn't nominate him for that position, that it is Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> terror. <laughs> oh, I mean, he was arguing with Bomani about Marvin Lewis for like 20 minutes. I did not understand what was happening. I was sitting right there. That's just who he is. He's I, always telling it like it is all of the time. I'd pay money for now, that audio. I would pay money for oh, that I'd, audio. I'd, yeah. I'd pay for that every, show. <laughs> every day I show up to work. And I am treated to the unaired seventh hour of Stephen A. Smith on television, and it is amazing. <laughs> it is truly amazing. That is one of the gifts that I get by having this show aforementioned. Now, Bobani Jones is probably second. He's probably a silver medalist, and I can say that because we had a consumer market research survey when we were launching High Noon, and they provided, like, different boxes to check and different categories to rate us on. And I believe Bomani got like an 89%, which is really high for this sort of thing, on guy who tells it like it is. That was actually a category. (laughs) Wait a minute. No, I don't believe that. Get out of here. Hold on a minute. That was not a category. Where am I on that list? Who gods has to be high? What do you mean? Wait a minute. There's There's a list floating around of how it is that ESPN grades telling it like it is? Go talk to the data research people. We got a PowerPoint presentation. (laughs) <laughs> One of the many characteristics we were all graded on inhumanely. By the way, while we were sitting there, I don't know if anybody has gone through this at the company besides me. It was, in fact, horrifying to learn that Bomani Jones get an eight, gets an 89% on telling it like it is, and I got like a 57. Yeah. I didn't realize it was that high. I mean, hold on. Can you I get us that tight. list? I, can you get us that list of is it a long list of telling it like it is? I, you've, it sounds like you've got some official rankings. There was extensive survey data that went into how much either of us told it like it is, how <laughs> funny we were, all of these things. And so there's quantifiable measurements that leads me to believe that Bomani is probably the silver medalist. Yes. Were you ashamed of your telling it like it is rating? I went into work the next day and just started flamethrowing people. Like, I've only tried to hot take since then in order to compensate for the fact that apparently – I tell it nothing like this. <laughs> it's all about the delivery. I've told you that, man. It doesn't matter what's coming out of your mouth. It's how you say it, Pablo. That's, Mike, that's what you need to master. Before the end of the show today, please find that paperwork. I want to break that story. I want it to be the only story ever broken by this show that, that we have the, peop- the paperwork, the documents that rank these people. We had Pablo on to talk about LeBron's business ventures, but we're out of time, so get out of here. All right. Good talk, guys. And also, Dan, I still hate you. All right. Good talk. (laughs) Demand once more money. Um, He's not doing a bit there. I think he's genuinely hurt. (laughs) Oh, I know he is. He took you to Wicked, Dan. Yeah. It wasn't very good. It wasn't very very good either. That was dinner. It wasn't Hamilton either. (laughs) 